Hello and welcome dear viewer as I vent and speak my mind about Guild Wars 2 for the next couple of minutes please bear with me. I am worried about the expansion. I am very excited to be proven wrong and I hope that's the case but there are one or two things that concern me about Guild Wars 2 expansion. Please bear with me as I go through a few things in my brain. Firstly, the timing of the expansion. End of Dragons was only released a year ago and already another expansion has been announced. Now I know that ArenaNet has gone forward and said that they are going to be releasing content more frequently in smaller expansion bites. And to be honest, I think this is quite good. Keeping things fresh, allowing new content to hit with new strikes and open landscape events. I think to be honest it can keep the game quite refreshing. Guild Wars 2 at this point in time has done so well keeping all gameplay relevant. Going through season 3, 4, you know, Path of Fire, Heart of Thorns, there's still so many people playing the maps, doing the metas and so much content to enjoy outside of what is just the best money making and the best grind. So that's something that ArenaNet has done so well in and I think that this can be good. However, it kind of... It reminds me slightly of Icebrood Saga. Icebrood Saga came out and it was so good, like in terms of building up this tension, this, this, are we on the right side of like the dragons? Like, do, do we actually understand what we're, what we're doing? Like, should we side with Jaw Mag? Like, are we wrong? Like, and they did such a good like narrative. And then all of a sudden they announced an expansion. They cut the story almost just, you know, pulling the rug under its feet and it crashed and burned to what I'd consider probably one of the most disappointing ends to a story, I'd say, other than freaking Dexter, the series. Now, this also concerned me because they just started with Gaia Ladalve and then they brought out that part two of it. So what was this all about? And I have to admit, even the storyline didn't really intrigue me, but it felt like we were still getting into Cantha and some of the areas around it. Now, I know that they might take us to one area and bring us back and maybe the expansion even expands on certain areas in some other ways. Although I doubt it based on the footage that we've seen of the expansion. However, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. We can always come back to it at another point in time, save it for later expansions. But it is quite a bit of a jarring effect as in we were focused on one area and suddenly we we're pulled to Canter and now we've been pulled out and it, it, it kind of does feel a bit like this at the moment. But I can be proven wrong in this. This is a very small thing. Which brings me to part two of my concerns. My other concern is just the lack of advertising. I feel like before End of Dragons, you know, there was the Fractal released, obviously, which kind of alluded to this change in the balance and the End of Dragons. And obviously, after every single YouTube video and there were adverts for End of Dragons for the different elite specializations hyping up the game, I feel like the entire MMO community at large knew there was an expansion drop in and were very hyped. We were hyped, everybody was getting excited. And I feel like that kind of created this anticipation and it's like great deliverance when End of Dragons dropped. Oppositely with Secrets of the Obscure, I, I don't feel like the community at large even knows that there's an expansion drop in. Um, and it's quite hard when like, you know, Final Fantasy's expansion drop was huge. And compared to that, I don't feel like anyone even knows we're there. And yes, there's gonna be Twitch drops, which is really great. And I recommend going to get the Twitch drops, watch the content. Unfortunately, I'm too small to, to be involved in this, maybe one day. But, you know, that is great. And it will attract a few eyes and people that want to see Guild Wars 2 and, you know, want to see what it's about. But it, I feel like it was a bit of a, a bit of a red flag to me to not really see as much advertising. To be honest, I actually almost forgot that this expansion was dropping a couple of weeks ago. I actually was like, oh, cheapest, it's in like two weeks time. I didn't even know, you know, like, and that's a kind of a bad sign, even for someone who plays Guild Wars 2 to not really be like, you know, like, oh yeah, yeah this is happening, you know, and, and yeah, so I feel like that's kind of a bit of a downside, a bit of a red flag for me. Now, those of you who are new players of Guild Wars 2 might not understand how Guild Wars did its expansions in the previous. All previous expansions came out and then there were what they called living world stories. These were basically expansions onto the expansion. So, you know, content they brought out every now and then, every like spaced out by weeks or months. And if you own the expansion when it released, you got the content for free. And if you weren't playing at that time, you could buy it later on with the gems. Now, I understand the decision they made. You know, they're saying basically at this point, they're not going to do that. They're rather going to do smaller clusters of expansions for cheaper amounts. And then you own your entire expansion, which is kind of nice in a way because I feel like some people that maybe bought, say, Heart of Thorns or Path of Fire, but weren't playing when the seasons came out or didn't collect them when the seasons came out, 
you know, kind of maybe felt like they, you know, they were kind of shortchanged on their expansions. However, this was never really the case because they were kind of complete expansions on their own with a story that started and ended within the expansion. And then the Living World seasons were just extra story, you know, kind of extra content and just a reason to buy the expansion, if that makes sense. I feel like the monetization model of Guild Wars has always been, I would say, ridiculously fair, even over fair. I mean, even in like one of Josh Triface's videos, he says that like Guild Wars 2 is probably the game that he always recommends new people to MMOs to buy because the amount of content to price you pay is astronomical compared to games like World of Warcraft, even, you know, Final Fantasy and ESO. Like, you have to pay a subscription. Guild Wars 2, you've never had to do that. You're literally paying you know, like a month or two months of subscription and you have an entire expansion that you can play whenever you want to. And yeah, there are obviously things in the cash shop to make the game more convenient, but it's actually a ridiculously fair model. But this is another part of my concern. ArenaNet as a company is phenomenal. I always get the impression that they're phenomenal. When I see any balance update or any chat from CMC or the team or any, you know, content, you know, that, they've, that they provide or do, they're always for the player base they're always adjusting things they're always balancing the game i get the feeling like they wake up in the middle of the night thinking about oh you know this ability is too strong let's uh, do this and this and i think that that is ridiculously good i think that honestly they are probably one of the best developers i would say other than you know grinding gear games which make part of exile in terms of just how i've seen them react to player feedback there is very few developers that care as much. And so I'm very impressed. But my major concern is the holding company of ArenaNet, NCSoft. For those of you who don't know, NCSoft is the holding company of ArenaNet. And basically, they're the ones who dictate most of how everything goes. At one point, they even wanted to put Guild Wars 2 on life support. Basically, just drop all funding, keep the game going, and just, you know, whatever profits come in, come in. But there was quite a bit of a resurgence at one point, and that basically gave them the confidence to allow End of Dragons to, to come into play. And obviously, because of the success of End of Dragons, they're obviously pushing into the new expansion. But if you look at NCSoft's games, which is like games like Lineage, Aeon, Blade and Soul, and games like this, and most recently, The Throne and Liberty. And I don't know if you've seen any videos on Throne and Liberty, but it is fairly worrying about the way that they were pushing into this sort of MMO. There was a lot of them wanting to pull developers off of Guild Wars 2 into other games that they wanted to rather promote. But if you look at all these other games, especially games like Throne and Liberty, which is the newest game which will release fairly soon, it is terrible. It is one of those like almost unplayable games. It is mobile style to the max degree, pay to win. And if you look at a lot of these, they have those elements. They are I know a lot of Korean games get bad reps for being paid to win or being a certain aesthetic to them. But at the end of the day, these are the people determining the budgets, the scope and the direction of a game. And so my concern is that with their other games not going as well as they want to, that they will try to push Guild Wars towards a certain style, maybe more towards the Korean style that a lot of Western players don't enjoy. We don't really enjoy these sorts of, you know, mobile-esque pay-to-win kind of games, obviously. Um, they've seen a lot of success in their actual mobile games, and that's pretty much where most of their, you know, profits and, and their direction lies. So allowing, hopefully, ArenaNet to carry on doing Guild Wars in the style that we know and love is what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that this expands Guild Wars. A lot of games, you know, you look at your World of Warcrafts, your Final Fantasies, um, definitely not ESO, ESO stands on itself, but a lot of games bring out an expansion and all other content becomes obsolete. And this is what we don't want. We don't want to lose the content that we, do, we enjoy. We don't want to lose things like raiding. Obviously, having PvE legendary armor is good. Allow the casuals to, to get their legendary armor the way they want to do it. But we don't want to lose, you know, the maps, the metas, the content that we enjoy. We want games to, to grow and basically expand. And I think that's something where, you know, I've played ESO recently and I actually am so struck. I didn't notice it the first time I played it, but how similar Elder Scrolls Online and Guild Wars 2 has approached their content to make all content viable, evergreen, the scaling, even the way cosmetics work and the way rewards work. It, they're actually so similar, obviously different game styles, but the actual overlaying like skeleton of the game is so good. And my hope is that Guild Wars 2 goes forward and not takes a step back to try copy the competition that we've seen recently 
is not doing well. If you look at games like Baldur's Gate 3 and how people have reacted to so much content for like a once-off payment and people have just been enjoying it and, and raving and, and their player base has shot up. I mean, their concurrent player base is higher than most other games monthly or, or yearly player rates and it's incredible to see. And I think that's the kind of hopefully takeaway that game companies take is rather make a good game, make it fair and make it one thing that people will support because they enjoy it so much. So yes, going into Secrets of the Obscure, I am hoping to be proven wrong and I want to be. I'm, my expectation is to be proven wrong. However, I do worry. I just worry that there is some sort of uh, an interference because they've changed their style going into expansion for what else has changed? You know, what else is there on the cards? And my hope is that it's all going to be amazing. I am going to document my first impressions. I'm going to go through the game. I'm going to record it and, and just kind of try to communicate through my own small little channel what I feel the game is. Is it going to live up to the expectation? Is it living up to the hype? And yeah, I'm really hoping that Arena Net just blow us away and that the game is obscenely good. That's my hope is that Guild Wars 2 can take that step up towards bigger games like your WoWs and your Final Fantasies and say, hey, listen, we're not only in the top 10 of MMOs that people play, we're, you know, in the top five we're in the top three we're one of the big ones now you know and they have that opportunity i feel like a lot of people have looked at recent expansions of things and just been under underwhelmed just not really living up to the expectations so i'm hoping as always thank you so much for watching if you like the video please give it a like and a subscribe that would be amazing and if you didn't like the video thank you so much for watching and hopefully i'll see you in the next one cheers